Hi everybody, Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors. And today's contract tip is the first in a series and it is called, what are the three most dangerous lines to leave blank in a real estate contract? So stay tuned for the other two videos in this series. Um, but I am going to start with one of the most dangerous lines to leave blank in a real estate contract, especially here in Georgia. Uh, we are in the hyper competitive real estate market in uh, April and May of 2022, where there are more buyers on the market than there is inventory or properties for them to buy. So in order to make a buyer's offer, buyers in order, one of the strategies that they are taking to make their offer more competitive to a seller is they are limiting or negating or not including various contingencies in their contract. Again, to make their offer competitive, to try and entice the seller to choose their offer over another buyer's offer. So the topic of today with respect to the contract is what happens if a financing contingency or an appraisal contingency, fill in the blank for the time frame is left blank. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> first of all, you all learned in pre-license school, or you should have learned, or you should have learned from your broker, never to leave a blank in any contract. If there is a fill in the blank, you need to fill it in. In our purchase and sale agreements, if there is a fill in the blank, that indicates that that is a topic or an area or an issue for the buyer and seller to negotiate and agree and come to terms with respect to that. There are lots of fill in the blanks in the Georgia Association of Realtors contracts and in the RE forms contracts. So don't leave any blanks. If, it ha if, it, if the fill in the blank is preceded by a number sign, this would be backwards, <laughs> uh, then it calls for numerals. And if it is preceded by the dollar sign, then the fill in the blank should be in numerals. If the fill in the blank is not preceded by a dollar sign, then it calls for words. Um, now, it depends. Sometimes there is a fill in the blank and then the following word is days. Well, obviously that calls for a number. Um, so the fill in the blanks for days typically are the, where it has to do with days or dates are the due diligence period, the binding agreement date and the time frame for various contingencies. Those are the three most dangerous fill in the blanks to leave blank in a contract. So today's topic is the has to do with the financing and appraisal contingency in a uh, uh, purchase and sale agreement where a buyer is getting financing. So. What does it mean if you don't fill in the blank? So it is up for various interpretation. If you, let's say you put in, um, we'll, just, we'll just deal with the appraisal contingency. Let's say you don't put in, a, a, you leave that fill in the blank where it says, it typically says, um, let me just give you an example from the GAR purchase and sale agreement uh, we'll start with the conventional loan exhibit, which is F404, and under the um, appraisal contingency, which is paragraph 11, it basically says that the agreement is subject to the following appraisal contingency. Buyer shall cause the lender to have an appraisal done, provide the seller with a copy of the appraisal for less than sale price. If any such appraisal is for less than the purchase price, the buyer shall have not less than oh, blank man. days from the binding agreement call. date, oh, and man. then Last you week, proceed the with the procedure. And let's take a look at the financing contingency in the loan exhibits. In the financing contingency, paragraph five, again, in the Georgia Association of Realtors conventional loan exhibit, States buyer shall have blank number of days from the binding agreement date to determine if a buyer has the ability to obtain the loan described above, so forth and so on. 
So again, this uh, video is not to talk about uh, what a financing contingency is or an appraisal contingency, but to talk about um, what happens if you leave blanks in those spaces. So, so what happens if you leave those time frames blank for an appraisal or a financing contingency? Does that mean that the contingency time frame is zero days? Or does that mean that the contingency time frame runs through the entire contract or any extension thereof? That's the question. And why is this an issue? This is an issue because if a buyer terminates a contract based on, in this example, the financing or the appraisal contingency, What's the time frame of that? Who's entitled to the earnest money? Is the buyer defaulting on the contract or is the buyer entitled to their earnest money back? Are the, is the buyer getting, will they get to retain their earnest money? Or are they losing their earnest money to the seller as liquidated damages for a default? Is it a default? Well, <laughs> bottom line is do not leave any blanks. And Georgia statute of frauds which is OCGA, which is the official code Georgia annotated, which is where all of our laws are, in Title 13, Chapter 5, Article 2, which is the statute of frauds, um, specifically 13-5-30, uh, specifically states that agreements must be in writing. And it goes on to describe agreements, for example, for a marriage contract, agreements less than a year, so forth and so on. But one of them has to do uh, that, it re uh, that it requires that every essential element for a contract for the transfer of title for real property must be in writing. Well, a time frame for a contingency, specifically a financing contingency or an appraisal contingency, absolutely can be argued as an essential element of that real estate contract. Now, if a contract fails to close, and uh, there is a termination release and the parties do not agree on the release of the earnest money. And the reason for the termination is one of these contingencies where the time frame is left blank. If it is a loan, which should be a loan for financing contingency, then one of the options is for the broker to interpret the contract or interplead it to a court. Well, there are various ways a broker may interpret that time frame. Um, was it meant to be zero days or was it meant to go through the end of the contract? And there can be a very uh, pretty substantiated argument made either way. Uh, on one hand, the argument can be made, well, yes, it meant to be, it was meant to be zero days. Look at the climate, look at the competitive nature of the market right now. And the buyer, uh, 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 Left, left it blank, meaning they were zero days for those financing or appraisal contingencies in order to get the seller to be competitive so the seller would take theirs. The other interpretation is, well, of course, I'm not going to go into a contract with zero contingencies. Yes, it is competitive, but I still need to protect my interest and my money. So I'm not going in with zero days contingencies. Um, I meant for it, you know, to go through the end of the contract or for the seller to to uh, counter back with that. But nevertheless, if you go binding with that blank. Now, the other way to uh, another pretty substantiated argument that if a time frame is left blank, it does run through the entire course of the time frame of the contract, meaning that that contingency, the buyer would be protected based on that contingency through day of closing or any extension thereof. Well, why, Dana, why, are, why do you say that? How on earth are you getting that? Well, because there are other uh, contractual provisions that don't have a time frame that absolutely do run through the end of the contract. For example, uh, specifically with uh, a, an appraisal contingency, let's look at the FHA and the VA loan exhibits. So in the amendatory clause, and I've done a lot of contract tips and some videos on uh, the amendatory clause, but it's specifically on the GAR and on the RE forms contracts where it has the amendatory clause paragraph, which in essence is the appraisal contingency for the contract. There is no date in there. Um, and 
the amendatory clause per the FHA uh, and per the VA, per those federal organizations, do indicate that a buyer's earnest money is protected. That contingency, that appraisal contingency, in essence, does run through the entire length of the contract, through closing date of the contract or any extension thereof. Meaning, uh, with respect to that, if the if the property appraises for less than sale price and a buyer's getting an FHA or a VA insured loan, then a buyer may terminate prior to the 11.59 p.m. on the day of closing and they will get their earnest money back. There's no fill in the blank for a time frame. It does run through the entire length of the contract. So, especially with respect to an appraisal contingency or financing contingency, I can make a pretty good argument that the interpretation would go through the contract. The seller never bothered to counter back and fill in a time frame, counter back with a time frame for that provision. So the seller agreed, sure, you, I have no worries about that. So you, uh, you, it, it goes through the end of the contract. So additionally, the, so number one, you don't want to leave it up to the interpretation of a broker because it is relatively ambiguous. And a broker does have the option of interpleading the earnest money into the uh, a court and uh, their fees, their court costs and fees taken out of that. And I don't think the buyer or seller really want to be engaged in a lawsuit over the earnest money regarding this issue. Um, additionally, if the Georgia courts, my understanding, I'm not an attorney and I'm not a judge, but my understanding from my research is that the Georgia courts uh, look at a missing term from a contract. How do they look at a missing term from a contract? Well, as mentioned, based on the Georgia statute of frauds, if it is an essential element, it must be in writing. And if it is, um, if it's readily interpreted, if, if a judge can make a reasonable interpretation uh, that is consistent with the rest of the contract showing the intent of the parties, then a judge can rule on the, basically filling in the blank for a time frame. Um, but if it is something that is basically up to, you, you cannot determine the intention of the parties or the intentions of the parties could be at odds with one another, um, then the judge could rule the contract unenforceable um, or the judge could rule on the statute of frauds that it has to be uh, filled in. So we don't know what, what specifically would happen. Um, but in essence, the court will, my understanding is the Georgia courts will not enforce a contract uh, where an essential term is left blank and it cannot be, uh, a judge cannot make a reasonable interpretation of the intent of the parties because they are uh, at odds for one another. So what do you do as a real estate agent? Number one, do not leave any blanks in the contract. Either fill in a dollar amount a number of days, words, um, or if you're on a counter offer form and there is no change from the original offer to the counter offer, you're going to put NC, which stands for no change. Or if it is something that is not applicable to the contract, then you'll put NA for not applicable. Um, so you absolutely want to make sure of that. You working with your clients, you definitely want to have a conversation regarding the time frames. And uh, especially for an appraisal or a financing contingency, do they want zero days or do they want a certain number of days? If you are on the receiving end of a contract, if you are the seller and you are receiving an offer or if you are receiving a counter offer for the buyer, um, do not accept a contract with the number of days blank. Make a counter offer back to the, the buyer filling in that time frame. Again, the, the way that the Georgia Association of Realtors contracts and the RE Forms contracts are presented to real estate agents to complete on behalf of their buyers and sellers with the fill in the blanks, if it is a blank, it definitely does communicate that that is a term for the parties to negotiate. Whew. So don't leave earnest money up for grabs. Um, that is not... Uh, that's not a great way to have a client relationship with either the buyer side or the seller side. Um, and don't leave a 
an essential term of the contract open for interpretation by the holder of the earnest money or by an attorney or a judge. Hope this contract tip helped you out. Stay tuned for the uh, for an explanation on the other two most dangerous blanks, fill in the blanks to leave blank uh, in a contract. And we're going to have a discussion on the binding agreement date. That's the another dangerous one, as well as the due diligence period. Thank you guys so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.